Okay, so in the last video we talked about the importance of gearing this uh, servo using motion axis direct commands and we geared the servo to the other servo, right? But we don't actually have the PLC controls for that. So as you see in my PLC program, I still have this working off a cam system. I do not use uh, Trainer Servo 2 yet. So let's go ahead and make this, um, let's go ahead and program the, the servo to um, cam to the R2 or, or actually uh, uh, gear to the other one. So first what we want to do is we want to come in here and save this and I'm going to save this as we'll call this uh, gearing 2022 and then we'll change this we'll take that out so first you want to save your program just so you can get a, a, a place right to where you know you have a backup and then we're going to go offline alright so first Keep in mind, uh, all the first logic that we have is basically pretty sound. So all we're going to do uh, is come down here where we started to do the MAM stuff and stuff like that. We don't necessarily need to do an MAM anymore. Um, although what we can do is reroute that MAM to actually, you know, let's just say, uh, we, well, we could use it off the virtual axis or we could use it off of if we wanted to gear it to a virtual axis But in this case, we're going to be gear it to this small servo So and that that's what we're going to do so we don't necessarily need that uh, so let's go ahead and get rid of some of this Program that we don't need so we're going to just get rid of it. No can building uh, None of that stuff. So uh, rep speed reference Speed reference, uh, I believe. Let's see, I don't need any of that. Uh, let's go ahead and change this. this. Is the cam? Let's take out the jog. Let's take out that. Uh, MAM again. We don't need that. And this MAM right here. So, homing, I, I believe, is still pretty much important. Um, you know, we kind of it, it's important to home that now. It's arguable to say, okay, in state four, instead of an MAM, what we want to do is have a, a gear, right? So let's say uh, motion state, uh, let's see motion gear right here. And then what we'll do is we'll get rid of this tag because it's not valid anymore. Uh, we're still going to use a trainer servo as the slave servo the uh, basically the master servo is going to be trainer 2 uh, we'll give it a name and control so we'll get rid of that we'll get rid of uh, this right here as far as that come down here get rid of this probably take this down here give it a name so in this case what we're going to call this is I believe I don't know if I have the commands for that so I let's see servo commands actually I do so let's come over here and grab that we're going to gear this and then the direction I want you to understand that the direction is basically the like if you have a zero or a one uh, zero is going to be the same direction and one is going to be opposite uh, so you have that avail availability to go over here in instruction help and actually understand that. So again, zero, slave, same direction. Uh, one, slave moves in the opposite direction. Uh, two, slave is X in reverse of the current or previous. Three, the slave continues to, uh, yeah. So anyway, keep things as simple. We're going to use zero. All right. So we'll keep that as zero put a zero right there the ratio is going to be a one to one ratio actually you know what let's make that uh, for the slave counts let's say well it's going to be the ratio is going to be one slave counts let's go and say let's say this is a uh, 10 10 to 1 and the reason I'm doing that is because this is going to be, if I turn this small servo, this this other servo is going to turn really, really fast and it's going to be kind of jerky. 
So what I'm trying to do, is I want to kind of smooth that out a little bit by doing the slave counts. Now again, um, we can do that by one to one. Rick, let's let's just do a one to one so you see the reference from that. The reference should be command, uh, or we'll do actual in this case. The ratio format. Uh, let's do real clutch. Uh, let's just say disabled and r the acceleration rate that's something I'm gonna put at a low acceleration so that I can get a decent translation in the acceleration units what I'm gonna do is put that at uh, units per second too and what we're gonna do is drag this down to here and we're going to say okay well this is done or actually I'm going to say process uh, in progress or in process. All right, so this is going to then go to our next scenario. So what we want to do is we want to go to five. And you see we're not still happy here, and that's just because we have a rung that's in there that's not happy. Uh, so let's add another rung because we want to be able to stop this. Um, so what we'll do is we'll say copy paste and then we'll go this equals to five and when that equals to five let's just say for x amount of seconds or actually until we let's just be fair uh until we we decide you know we want to stop it so we'll have like a bit in here that says stop or something uh so we'll shift back over here to our bits we'll grab a bit right here and it says we'll name this stop gearing and let's get rid of the capitalization all right so stop gearing and then what we're going to do is come over here and we'll go back to motion commands we're going to state and then we'll go to move and then our move we want to have a motion axis stop all right so in the stop we're going to what what axis are we going to stop we're going to stop the actual trainer servo. Uh, the motion instruction, we're just going to give it our name. There are motion instructions that we had before. This is going to be our stop. So motion axis stop. Don't believe I've used this one before. So let's use zero um, in this in the programming so far. Stop type. Do we, what do you want us to do? You want to stop all? You want to stop gear? And we could just choose gear um, in this case. That's perfectly fine. Let's do that. We'll just stop gear and the decel rate. We'll put no. We don't really care to decel. Uh, the decel rate. Um, let's just put something in 10 decel units again per second. Jerk. No, we don't really care about that. We'll put 10 as, that, as far as that goes to and the jerk uh, units per second again. All right. So uh, with that said, let's go to our final section, and we'll, we're almost done, and then we're going to download and check this logic. All right, so we're going to come over here, do the motion action stop. We're going to say the stop is actually done. Our process complete is fine. Um, <clears throat> in that case, we'll copy this, and we'll come over here, and we'll paste that in there, and then what we want to do is go back to state let's just say we're going to go back to state zero so we'll cut the servo off start the process all back over now what we're going to do now is actually test this okay so what I want to do is I want to come over here and download this code okay so we want to download the code to the actual program or to the actual processor and test the code out all right this is a very, very, very short program. Um, so just keep in mind, shouldn't take long whatsoever. Uh, let's just see. And then we'll, we'll show you this small servo controlling this servo. All right, so we're gonna go to remote run. We're currently in a state of zero. Okay, so we're currently in a state of zero because we have not started. I can hit the start button. system is started we are our group is uh, actually synced now so we're down here and the current state is five
Okay, so the current state is five because it came over here and it went ahead and the gearing has started. So what if I go ahead and I take this servo right here and I just merely turn this servo, you can see it's geared to the other servo. Now you see how kind of jerky that is and choppy. That's the reason I was going to fine tune it with the the actual. So keep in mind this is being controlled, but it will not run. I cannot control it unless I turn this. So no matter if I turn it this way, it turns that way. If I turn it this way, it turns the opposite way. So you see, and no matter how fast I turn it, it turns that fast, right? So if I just sit there, turn it like that. So that's actually geared. So what if we stop the gear? What if we toggle this bit and we stop the gear? Okay. So then if I turn it, it will not go anywhere. So that is a good set of logic to test um, when it comes down to it. Now, the way I do have this program, uh, it, it is a little counterproductive. So let's actually copy this bit and say, uh, right here, we want to paste that in and use the opposite, come over here so that, because right now, if you've seen the way that logic worked, as soon as I, uh, well, as soon as I untoggle that, it geared back. So again, it's geared, right? It's, it's running. And then if I toggle the bit, come back over here, it's not geared, right? And I'm not even trying to gear it, right? It's not even being tried to gear. See, because it's in state four, it's waiting on that that gear stop bit to actually not be high, not be as a state of one, it's in state of zero, to actually fire this. Now, once I toggle this bit, it will trigger that instruction and then turn again, go back to gearing and, and work off the other servo. Now again, I'm using this as an example. Again, I don't have a fat power feedback. I'm just using it as an example because I do not have an encoder that I've ordered. I'm waiting on it to come from eBay. And hopefully it's a good in good shape so that we can do some good training with it because you know you never know with that. But uh, with the state of the supply chain these days, that's kind of we're kind of at the mercy of that. So hopefully you learned a lot from this video and we'll see you guys on the next one.